right, guys, welcome back to another episode with the plugs. Chris here, and I have a special guest, Summer, a very good coworker and friend. Um, she was born and raised in Pittsburgh, right? Pittsburgh, That's right. Pennsylvania. So she's hardcore. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I come from the streets. She she scared me a little bit at first. <laughs> um, no, but she's awesome. She's hardcore, but uh, she keeps it real. You know, she's a real friend. I'll always tell you the truth, good or bad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I know everyone would say about her. Um, but why don't you kind of introduce folks um, and tell them what we're going to be talking about today? You know, just about staying anchored and grounded mm-hmm. uh, in the middle of the storm. Absolutely. I mean, I think. 2020 was a rough year for so many of us. So just being able to relate, I hope a lot of people, I, actually, I don't hope, I wish you had a great year in 2020, but I think a lot of people can relate to that year just being tough. You know, it was a struggle for so many, whether it was losing jobs or losing loved ones or, you know, whatever it may be. But um, I think, like you said, just anchoring yourself and having that peace in the storm is so important. And I got to be honest with you. I'm not the best at that. I'm very impatient. Like you said, I'm very transparent. I don't mind putting my story out there. And maybe that's why God is using me at the moment because maybe somebody needs to hear it. Yeah. You never know. Absolutely. So um, for 2020, I had an extremely rough year. I had actually had surgery, which wasn't a, a big deal. But about three weeks after my surgery, my husband, I was with him for 16 years, married for 10 and, um, you know, he came to me and said, I'm not in love with you anymore. Mm. And he wanted a divorce. Um, and that wasn't really the worst part. The worst part was he then kind of got with a, a best friend of mine, someone mm-hmm. I thought was my best friend. Yeah. So you can imagine a double betrayal. Can only imagine. Three weeks after you have surgery. Yeah. <laughs> so you're trying to you're trying heal. To recover and heal and, you know, tired and, you know, just trying to get right mentally, physically, and then. Absolutely. Bombs drop on you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That was extremely tough. Um, And then um, I lost my mom in November. She passed away. And Mm. she was only 60, so it's young. You know, it's very unexpected. And and, um, it was, you know, just full transparency. It was was drug-related. So it was a hard pill to swallow, no pun intended. But... um, you know, she. <laughs> <laughs> were you were you close to your mom? I was uh, very close. She's still in. She was still in Pittsburgh, and you know, being in Florida, um, I didn't necessarily agree with her lifestyle mm-hmm. um, towards the end there. But I am so big on, you know, addiction. Gosh, that's a whole other topic we can go on. Yeah, and yeah. I think it destroys a person. They have no control over it, and she's such a strong woman and raised me to be a strong woman that to see something take hold of her and ruin her life yeah um it was sad so i I was very close with her but we kind of grew a little bit apart because i had to set boundaries Mm. which are very it's very hard with a family member or friend yeah and we 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 talked about that uh we've had several series about relationships and friendships and just being mindful of the people that you're around and the people that you keep close to you, which mm-hmm. sometimes can be your own family. You got to you gotta separate yourself from them a little bit because, you know, there's a little toxicity right there. Right. So in your case, like, that's hard. It's your own mom. Oh, right? sure. Um, but one thing you mentioned, I, I just want to um, kind of expand on about addiction. You said something takes over you. Like, if you're listening to this and, and you don't have this comprehension, like, Addiction is a spiritual thing. Mm. Like anything that you're going through in your mind, it, it's all spiritual. And if you're not super spiritual, it might be hard for you to understand that. But addiction is completely a spiritual thing, um, and you can only win it spiritually. You know, whether it doesn't necessarily mean that person has to be getting on their knees and praying every day, but the people around you, Amen. right? And at the same time, it's all God's will. You know, Mm -hmm. it's all his timing, his plan. You know, you could, I'm sure you were praying for your mom, praying for, you know, had other people praying for her. But at the same time, it's all God's will. Mm -hmm. It's his plan. And sometimes that's hard for, for us to grasp. It's hard for us to understand. It's hard for us to accept, Mm -hmm. you know, Um, but I I, will get into that another day. Yeah. But I, I just wanted to drop that. Um, for the listeners so that they could really understand that 
a little bit. Absolutely. You yeah. know, and they, a lot of times they don't know where to go. They want out. They don't want to live that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Who wants to live that lifestyle, mm-hmm. right? Nobody. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just so hard. And until you either they drop to their knees and surrender everything or mm-hmm. sell, you know, and I believe in um, prayer over someone, you are not what you're going through. Mm-hmm. I don't care what somebody speaks over you. I, mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm here to break that chain through yeah. for my family. My sister's going through an addiction and, you know, I've been praying for her and I just think God can work miracles. But again, it does come to God's will. Mm-hmm. So unfortunately we have to, and that's why, you know, I'm okay talking about it Yeah, because I, I understand that um, I couldn't control it. Mm-hmm. I tried, Yeah, you know, I tried yeah. to fix everything, but I can't fix anything. I'm not God. Yeah. So I, 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 this is something I'd like you to share for, because, you know, we want to help new believers and especially like if someone's in a similar situation as you or they have family members that are struggling. Mm-hmm. So for you, like when you first came to faith, was it, you know, OK, I believe, but God, you got to fix this thing for me, you know, or, or you felt like did you feel like God was punishing you? Because some people feel like that. Oh, I did this bad in my life and now God's punishing me by doing this. To, I'm just, you know, I yeah. want people to understand what mindset you were in when you first came to faith. Oh, gosh. Well, if crazy thing is, I was um, baptized by uh, my uncle, who was a pastor, mm-hmm. um, and he it was Baptist, and, you know, they went to church Wednesdays and Sundays and everything, and he's like, you're baptized. But I was so young. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. I How just, old were you? Maybe 11. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, I just did it because it's what was supposed to be done. Mm. Um and did I get to the point where I needed, I knew what God would do? No. As I grew in my faith, I was the one that went to church. I kind of yeah. went to church because it was a social thing. I, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I went because I had friends that would go there, and but I went to church. I did want to hear some stuff, but I, I went to a Presbyterian church. Like, yeah. you better sit there and not say a word or you're going to be in trouble. Um so uh, then I just started to notice little things. And I know this sounds really silly, but I would notice, for instance, when I was in college, um, I was down to my last dime. And I remember just being like, oh, my gosh, how am I going to make it through? How, how am I going to take the bus to college? And I got a random check. And I, I couldn't tell you right now who it was from, but I want to say it was like at t or something crazy. And they're like, oh, we, you overpaid. And it was the exact amount. It was like $27, the exact amount that I needed. I'm not kidding you. And I was like, that's a God thing. Not a coincidence. No, I'm like, that's a God thing. So just little things throughout my life have constantly happened. And so when my children, I've got two teenage girls, and they're at that point in their life where they're like, I don't know if I believe in God. And that's so hard for me to hear because Mm -hmm. I know the things that have happened to me. And there's no other explanation for it, you know? But I think if I force them into it, they're going to be like, oh, okay, mom, sure, whatever, we'll prove it. You know, I can't prove it, it's through faith. And um, so I'm I'm trying to show them through what has happened to me. And, And I think that's the best thing you can do.